Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and uh, welcome back to the ongoing free game dev resource series. This is all about gathering together the best free tools for game development, all facets of game development, from uh, designing to graphics to resources to today, text editors. Yes, the lowly code editor or text editor. And even if you are not a programmer, you are probably using a text editor of some form, even if it's just to configure JSON or config files from your game. And of course, if you are a programmer, you may spend more time in your text editor than anywhere else. So that's exactly what we're going to cover today. Now, before we get into it, I do want to explain that we're covering text editors and not IDEs. Integrated development environments are going to be for a different time. Now, do keep in mind, the area between the two is getting pretty blurry. There are some text editors you can add enough functionality to them that they're essentially IDEs. And then you've got some IDEs that are fairly simple and are really just glorified text editors. But I have to make the division somewhere, so don't worry, I will be doing a chapter on IDEs as well in the future. So if you're unaware of the free game development series, uh, there is a companion page over on Game From Scratch. Um sorry, on Dev Game, uh, it will be linked down below, of course, and we're slowly filling in the categories. So if you're interested, we've already covered um, game edges to a certain degree, 2D graphics resources, 3D graphics resources, that includes things such as uh, game sprites, texture maps, and so on. And today we're going to be filling in the text editors category. Now, as you can see, this is very much an ongoing work in progress, but all of the links that we are talking about today will be there. So I will link to both the homepage and the text page. I will also link to the playlist. I've done a couple of these videos now. So if you are looking for free resources, hopefully we've got you covered. And without further ado, let us jump in. And we are going to jump in with the daddies. There's two of them. They're both very old. They have been around for a very long time and they are still being used and developed to this day. So that says something about their functionality. The first one is Emacs. It's GNU. Uh, it's part of the GNU project. It is an open source uh, Lisp based uh, God, this is as close as you get to an IDE without being an IDE, but it's generally a text editor on amphetamines. It is insanely complicated in what it can do, uh, but it is also insanely capable in what it can do. If you are willing to dedicate a lot of your life to learning a text editor, eventually your muscle memory takes over and this becomes incredibly efficient. There is a reason why so many editors offer Emacs key bindings and same with the next tool. So if you're willing to invest the time in learning Emacs, it is worth the investment. I actually had it used, had to use it on one job. It took me about three or four months to truly get competent. So yeah, three or four months to get competent with a text editor. But once you get it, it, it just makes so much sense. The amazing amount of stuff you can do without ever even touching your mouse, you can do a staggering amount of functionality inside of this. And there are tons of extensions and language formats out there. And it is available for every single platform under the sun. In fact, every video, every text editor we are going to mention bar one is available for Linux, Mac, and um, Windows. So unless it's otherwise stated, just assume that everything is cross-platform. All right. So that is GNU Emacs. It's something like 43 years old right now. And then the other one we've got is Vim. Now Vim is younger. It's 32, 33 years old, uh, but it is a poor or an, uh, an improvement on Vi, which is also 40 plus years old. So this is another one of those ubiquitous text editors, hardcore from the Unix environment, a little bit less so in the Windows environments. And really, Realistically, if you are from a Linux background or a Unix background, you are either Tim, Team Vim or Team Emacs. I was Team Emacs. I never really got that much into Vim, uh, so it, it's not really my thing so much. But it does have extensive plugin support, extensive programming file support, extensive text management support, and it's got the minimalistic text focus, non mouse interface that you've got used to with Emacs. Now, I do warn you before you jump into either of these ones, they are a huge investment in time to learn. If you are just doing some occasional text editing it is a complete waste of your time. But if you live in your text editor, it may be worthwhile to check out one or the other. Just for an example though, the process of saving a document is somewhat famously in Vim is shift colon W Q. So you have to memorize stuff like that to just save your document. It's not control S, it's shift colon W Q. And keep that in mind. That's the kind of stuff you're dealing with there. So the rest of the ones in this list are going to be much simpler to learn. 
Now, the first one is, I'll confess straight up front, this is my favorite. This is my tool of choice. This is becoming my IDE of choice, to be honest. I use Visual Studio Code way more than I use Visual Studio nowadays. So this is one of those text editors that can really be extended to the point where it has everything you need inside of it. It's like the, the line between like Visual Studio Code fully loaded and say Emacs base is very, very blurry. Now, Visual Studio Code is based on the Electron platform is actually a Microsoft project, but the name is very confusing. Visual Studio Code has absolutely jack to do with Visual Studio. They're completely different products. They're just rebranding or reusing the name. And I think they actually kind of hurt themselves in a little bit because a lot of people that might otherwise be turned off by the huge bloated Visual Studio, you know, Windows first mentality, don't realize what a lightweight, fast, capable cross-platform text editor they're getting in Visual Studio Code because of that branding. So, uh, Without anything else said, with extensions, Visual Studio Code is hands down my go-to weapon of choice. And if you're struggling with which one of these to check out, <laughs> go check out Visual Studio Code. Once again, it's available on all platforms. Now, in an ironic twist of fate, there is another Electron-based. Uh, Electron is basically kind of like a host for JavaScript applications. Um, and don't let that turn you off. They're still blazingly fast. Uh, the alternative we've got here is Atom. Now, Atom was created by GitHub, and it is very similar in what it accomplishes and how it accomplishes it to Visual Studio Code. If you don't like one, try the other. They're very similar in what they try to do. The irony is Atom was started by GitHub and uh, obviously Visual Studio Code was started by Microsoft. And since then, Microsoft has purchased GitHub. So now they're both open source projects, so they're not gonna go away in either case. But the ultimate maintainer for both of these projects is now Microsoft. So the two closest competitors in my mind for uh, powerful text editors are, are both Microsoft projects at this point in time, which I would have never saw coming ages ago. And again, this one can really blur the line between a text editor and an IDE, but it's definitely worth checking out. Next up, we have Notepad++. This is the only exception to the rule. This guy is Windows only. Now, if you ever used Notepad in Windows and thought, hey, I love this. I love the minimalism here. I love the starkness of this, but I wish this could do a thousand times more. Well, you just described Notepad++. It's basically Notepad on crack. Uh, it's got tabs, it's got uh, full text searching, it's got plugin support, it's got multiple language support, it's got uh, extensions. It's a very powerful, uh, free, um, open source, t uh, Windows only text editor. So if you're on Windows, and you like the Windows look, uh, definitely check out Notepad++. If you're on another platform, well, I think it does run in Wine, but with the existence of Visual Studio Code and the like, I don't see why you would do that. Now, I actually use this guy on my server only. It's great for handling multiple configuration files. It's got some really powerful uh, find and replace and text parsing functionality in there that I just haven't really duplicated somewhere else. But really, it comes down to a matter of preference. The other thing about Notepad++ is I believe it was shipped or it's bundled with um, the Raylib C++ library to try and get you up and going faster. Uh, and it just kind of shows you. It can actually be used as a full-blown development environment to a certain degree, but it is definitely a text editor, a very powerful text editor, but a text editor nonetheless. Next up, we have Brackets. Now, Brackets was started by Adobe. Uh, it was used to create like a modern code editor for doing web editing. Uh, so you can do things like a live preview. So you can actually see the results of the like WYSIWYG results of HTML or CSS as you are writing it, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't really recommend Brackets per personally too much because I find it really like a pig. Um, I find I can get the same kind of functionality in Visual Studio Code or in Atom. Like you can install a plug into either of those to give you live preview or hosted web services as well. But if you're primarily a web developer, um, then definitely do be sure to check out Brackets. Again, it's cross-platform, open source, and quite capable in what it can do. Modern UI, you name it. My only real, again, complaint is, one's not really a complaint, but it's, it's very much focused towards web technologies. Uh, so if that's what you're looking for, it's a strength of it. If it's not, a bit of a weakness there. But the biggest thing I found is it just, it seems to be just slower than the other IDs. And next we have Komodo Edit. Now Komodo Edit is an open source project from Active State. Um, it's a subset of their Komodo IDE. It is the open source kernel of their text editor. It does not have all of the functionality of those guys, but it does have quite a bit of it. Now, I personally don't actually have a lot of experience with Komodo Edit. Uh, I haven't had a need for it in a very long time. We're actually 
horrifically spoiled for text editors these days. Uh, but if for some reason the other ones don't work for you, do be sure to check out Komodo Edit. Uh, you can see that the, the UI is slightly different than what we're used to from other guys, uh, but it is very much a code focused uh, IDE or sorry, text editor, not IDE. And if you want to go the full IDE experience, but you're used to Komodo edit, you can jump over to the commercial Komodo IDE project or product. And this last guy, I have to admit, 100% does not belong on this list. It does, it is not free. Okay, so uh, just so you know that right up front, Sublime Text is not a free editor. So why am I including it? Well, it's kind of got the most liberal trial you've ever seen in your life. So the whole idea is you download it and you can use it indefinitely. But if you use it indefinitely, you're supposed to get a license. So it's one of those ones, definitely check it out, especially if you're willing to um, potentially spend a bit of money. Before I switched over to Visual Studio Code, I tried out Sublime Text and I was using Sublime Text and I darn near purchased Sublime Text because, well, it's kind of sublime. <laughs> it, it's it's clean, it's minimalistic, It's it's well designed. It's got nice functionality like the uh, high level code view you saw there. It has good extensions and supports and plugin extensions. And a lot of people are writing extensions for it to make it work very well with other languages or libraries. So Sublime Text can be a very sublime experience. I just want you to be 100% aware, even though it looks like you can download it and use it for free indefinitely. If you are actually using it indefinitely or in a commercial environment, there is a license fee attached. So it really shouldn't be on this list. It's not a free text editor, but it is an extremely liberally available trial. So I kind of threw it on there just, just to be safe that I made, made sure I included it. Because if there was a text editor that I wasn't on this list that I really thought should be, it was Sublime Text. So even though it doesn't technically qualify, I put it on there anyways. All right, so that is the best free text editors as far as I've seen. I know there are a bunch of other ones out there. There are some platform specific ones. So there's Gnome Edit. I, I didn't really put it on. It's a little, it's sort of like how I didn't put Notepad on here. But uh, if there are some that you highly recommend that did not make this list, please do let me know. This list is a live document, so even though this video obviously can't be updated, at least until next year's version, I can definitely keep the list as lively and as um, useful as possible. I want this to be the best resource for free game development that you can find out there, or game development, or just development, I guess, in general. So if you have another one that should be on this list, please do let me know comments down below or over on the comments on game game yeah i can't speak dev game and i will be sure that i add that in as well so hopefully some guys found that useful uh if in not you went through and you looked at all those and your eyes were crossed and you can't decide which one to go with just give visual studio code a shot don't let the microsoft visual studio part get in your way it is lightweight and awesome and is highly recommended all right so let me know comments down below what do you think what do you use what is your weapon of choice was it on this list and if it was not on this list let me know so i I can add it to this list, assuming, of course, that it's free. And if you're paying for uh, a text editor, I'd be really curious to hear which one you are actually paying for. All right, that's it. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.